So Elon Musk has this great quote, okay? And he says, if life is a video game, the graphics are great, but the plot is confusing and the tutorial is way too long. Well, I, I agree with him on the, pl the the tutorial is way too long because life takes too long to figure out. And I'm here to tell you, I mean, I'm 60 and I've been trying to figure this out for my entire life. It's been a fun journey, but it's been a pain in the backside a lot of the times. But I do have to agree with him that the graphics, if this is a video game, is great. And I've got five words to prove it. Ben and Jerry's ice cream. The best on the planet. It's the best reason to be born here on Earth, let me tell you. But the third thing I kind of have a bone to pick with Elon about the plot. The plot is not confusing, at least once you figure it out. And if you want to stick around, I'm going to tell you exactly what the plot of life is along with why I believe this is a video game, that the life we're living is a video game. There's a little bit of twist on that, but I still believe it. So stick around. Uh, I'm Michael Cole, and welcome to my world. Okay, Elon, here you go. The plot to life. And it has nothing to do with simulations, coding, tech, nothing like that. It all begins with humans. We're the ones that start it, and the tech flows or follows from us because it's a reflection of us. Okay, you ready for the plot? Here it is. One, we come here to play. Two, we choose a body in order to play with. Three, we choose the game that we want to play. And four, we play it. And we play it with fun, and we play it with abandon, and we help, and we learn, and we grow, and we serve. And if you're me, you eat a lot of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And then once the game ends, we don't die. We never die, ever die. But what we do is we choose if we want to play another game, same thing, or we want to choose something completely different. And that is the plot of life. That's exactly what happens, and that's all that happens. And personally, I think it's a hell of a ride. For a long time, I've actually believed that technology is kind of like a reflection or a representation of what we are already able to do as humans, right? The things that we're capable of, and that maybe that we do, or maybe that we don't do as much, or maybe we might be able to learn. But technology is a representation of that, almost our way of bringing it into the physical world so maybe we can see what we're capable of if we don't realize it already. So, I mean, there's a lot of examples out there like uh, energy and electricity. I mean, if you look at it, we are all energy. Everything around us is just composed of complete energy. And the reason why we've come down here, I think, on the planet is to learn to manipulate energy, to be able to create what we want, to be able to do the things that we want. And if you want other examples, I mean, look at cell phones and Google. I mean, my God, those are the, the best examples right there. I mean, with Google, you sit there like Google Maps, right? How many times have you gone to an intersection and you kind of go, well, should I turn left or right? And you kind of go, something says to turn right. Yeah? How many times does that turn out? Actually, it works out pretty good for me. But what that is, it's like... We already know what's going on inside. We have that ability to understand, right? If we were able to tap into it. Some of us, we do it a little more regularly and some of us not as much. So we created Google Maps, I think, in order to kind of like show ourselves that this is what we're capable of doing. You remember? It's like, you remember? You remember? Cell phones? Come on, that's instant communications. Telephones, cell phones, instant communication instead of being separated by a lot of miles and not being able to understand what the other person needs or wants or just to say hi. How many times have you heard those, those classic arguments, right, of like twins, and they're separated by, you know, a lot of miles and all of this stuff, but yet one twin knows when something bad happens to the other one. Now, you could, you could argue that that's entanglement, which kind of it is in a way, I guess, because you can't get more entangled than twins. Same thing for mothers and children, but how many times have you known when something was up, when something was going on? We've all had that experience before. And again, so what happens? We come up with the technology to both do what it is we already know we can do, and maybe in some cases remind us of what we're capable of. 
And the, if you really want to believe something really whacked out, right? Okay, look at the progression from uh, horse and buggy to car to jet to supersonic aircraft, right? And if you believe it or not, that's kind of similar to those great mystics who end up going out and exploring the universe in their own way, and also who are able to project their bodies to other places on the planet. Now, you may not believe that, but I kind of think that's interesting as hell, and I wouldn't mind trying it myself. It's all things that we're capable of doing, that we're already ready to do, that are reflected in our technology. So back to the whole point of this whole thing, video games, right? What are they? Well, they are the representation for all of life. Yeah, that easy and that huge. Now, but before we go on into the, the whole rest of this thing, I have to kind of set the stage a little bit because I happen to believe this one particular concept and it feeds into everything else from here. I believe to the core of my being that we choose our own parents. Edgar Cayce has talked about it. Uh, it's all over the Seth material. And honestly, it's probably been a thing ever since parents have been invented. Um, and the reason why is it's such a beautifully elegant, simple concept, because as soon as you come to understand that, you realize that we are no longer victims of them or of anything else in the world, because we create what we want. We choose, we chose to be born and we choose to create everything in our world. Just a beautiful, simple argument. And that's what I believe. And as a matter of fact, next week's episode is all about that. And that one should be fun. So what happens in a video game? Well, and I know every video game is going to be different. And But if you've played a lot of video games, you've chances are you've gone through a number of these steps. So the first one, what do you do? You pick your avatar. You pick who you're going to play the game as. And that could be a big burly guy if you want, or it could be a, a woman who's actually really incredibly fast and quick. It doesn't matter, but you get to choose who you want to play as. Next thing is, is you might have to choose your gifts or maybe what your weapon system is, if, if that's the kind of game you play. So you could sit there and, and do the choice between, well, should I pick the big gun or should I pick the stealth technology, right? Because that matters and you get to choose and that's how you play your game, which leads us to the last thing, which is you get to choose the game that you actually want to play. And there you can do anything from shooting up Nazis and aliens to building a house or cities, or you could even drive through a countryside filled with beautiful gems. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. So the real, the real world equivalent of all of this is, right, you have to pick your avatar. You have to pick who you're going to play as. Well, you get your physical body by choosing your parents. And when you choose your parents, you get their DNA. And when you get their DNA, you kind of get a rough idea of who you're going to end up as. You pick your avatar, how you're going to go. Now, as far as uh, gifts, and I suppose some things could be classed as weapon systems, but uh, I believe that we, you really, we come in with our personality semi-fully baked, right? I know we go through life to kind of build other aspects of our personality, but there's a lot that we choose when we come in. It's like if you talk to a lot of parents, a lot of them will say, Oh, they, 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 were, they were like that from the beginning. That was their personality from the beginning. Each, each kid is going to be different, right? Whether good or bad or whatever in between. They always have their personality that they come in. And I think the other aspect of that also is that we choose before we come in kind of what our strengths are, right? Okay, do I want to be an artist or do I want to be able to cook or bake or have like this insatiable curiosity that I've just got to figure out why everything works. Or maybe uh, maybe the talent that you have, the particular talent, is being able to level quarterbacks. And uh, that may come in very handy in your life. <laughs> and then the last thing, of course, is that we, we choose our game, uh, the actual game that we want to play. And the, the best way I can describe this is just ask you one question actually make a statement, right? Because it's like the game that I want to choose is I want to be a Neanderthal. And if you choose that, 
you get the time, you get all of that stuff, you know exactly how that game is going to play out. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be there because I like my showers. So why do we even do this? Well, I'll answer that question with another one. Why do we do it in a video game? We do it to play. And we choose to come here to this life to play. And I don't care. I understand that there's pain and hardship and all of that, but this life was meant to be played. And how can you not? I mean, we're surrounded with cars and music and windy roads and ocean and love and friends and everything else. It's meant to be played. But here's the kicker over everything else. While we're here, we never die. We never really truly ever die. Now, when we're in this kind of game, when we're in this particular life that we're playing right now, when we're in this game, yeah, we can die and we go away. But I'll tell you, I learned something really important when my father died. And it was a it was a shift in my mind. And I changed my focus from the loss over to oh, he's not gone, he's just not here. When somebody dies in this world, I'm telling you, they're not gone, they're just not here. But I'll also tell you, they're still with you. And they're standing right behind you as you're playing the controls and they're cheering for you and they've got their hand on your shoulder and they're still loving you. They're still with you and they always will be. Just like if you were playing a video game. Now, it's your game. You get to play it any way you want. You chose it. Play it with abandon. Play it with joy. Play it with fun. But more than anything else, create everything you want in this game. You already started it. Finish it. Create the world exactly the way you want it. And play. Well, that's all I got. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Come along for the journey. And uh, But if nothing else, my main thing for you is I want you to play this week. Focus on that. Life is a game. Play it and have a ball. Love you.